One cast, one forged, both PXG. The question is, what makes them different? And why might you choose one over the other? There's only one way to find out. Let's get out on the golf course and put these together in a head-to-head, -head, PXG versus PXG. I think, first of all, there's nobody that could have bought the sort of Gen 3 irons and be concerned about there's too many similarities with the 0211. There is a big price difference that we're going to talk about, but there's very much a difference in how these things look aesthetically. And I think you can see the difference also in terms of what you've paid your additional money for. And I think that's important, like I said, for anybody who's going to stretch to this um, higher price point, you need to see those differences. But that said, Starting with the 02211, uh, it's a brushed satin finish, I suppose you'd call it, as a profile, very much uh, minimalistic, apart in terms of markings, apart from this strip across the back that displays the PXG logo and the 0211. In my opinion, if there's something they can do better, if there's going to be a version 2 of, the, uh, of this model, I think they can improve on that. It's the one thing that just slightly lets it down is that markings across the back. It's not something that is majorly a problem, but I think for me, it's something they could look to improve. But in terms of the profile of the club, again, I mentioned it in previous reviews, lovely the way it's chamfered around the edges. Um, again, that attempt to make that top line look that bit thinner by again, like I just said, chamfering off that top line, really good at address. It's a slightly longer profile again, and we'll come to that when I talk about them, uh, when I talk about this Gen 3 now. Um, it's a much more sort of compact head on the Gen 3. It's a much more meatier profile is what I would say. Um, the perimeter weighting, I think I've said again, is something that I think is a very much uh, iconic now look of PXGs. And I love it. I love the nuts and bolts of it. And I think it looks really, uh, it, it, it's industrial, it's aggressive. It's very much that sort of darkness theme. And I like it. But again, that extra milling across the back of the club face. I don't know how much it, impacts on performance very little i would imagine but in terms of visually it looks absolutely stunning top line again they do exactly the same thing chamfer off those sort of top lines so it looks and appeals uh, appears to be that slightly uh, thinner version and perhaps what it is but what i will say is this you can see the differences and i think that's key like i said for anybody who's paid that additional money it's key that you recognize what you've paid for that's recognisable, but they're both very, very good looking clubs in their own right. Next up is how they feel. I'm going to hit a couple of balls off here and trying to give you some kind of description and the differences of the two. And I'm going to start off with the, uh, the 0211. I'm going to tee this up off a bit of turf. You've seen this old quite a lot. It's, uh, it's uh, hole number 12, a par 5, and it's certainly not an iron off the tee, but uh, it is today. Again, just that little cut off the left-hand side, and that's going to come right back into the middle of the fairway. More than happy with that. And uh, in terms of feel on the 211, it's the biggest thing that baffles me to date, and I've said it in the reviews again previously, is to what PXG did with the, a cast club is do something with the acoustics and a feel that I've not seen before. And like I said, that's the biggest, the most impressive part, I think, for me, are the 211s. Uh, so from a sound feel perspective, it's a massive thumbs up. I'll be scoring these both at the end in terms of a head-to-head -head scoring, and you'll see what I decide to give it out of uh, my market 10. But all I can say is that, like I said, really defies the sort of cast makeup and how it sounds and feels is superb. No questions asked. So switch up to the... Um, the Gen 3 iron, and again, different materials, a forged head. So we're expecting to feel a difference and to feel that sort of more buttery soft feel. Tough act to follow with that iron that's just uh, gone into the middle of the fairway. That's another solid ball, slightly less cut. It's going to end up not too dissimilar in terms of where it's landed. What's happened there is those balls have pretty much done what they've what they do in dry ball data and there's nothing to separate them but in terms of feel it is softer there's no doubt about it for me you can feel that forge difference i still believe that's there however good that cast feeling and sound is there is that notable change when you move up to the forged head 
Right, so time for some dry ball data and this is where we kind of look at uh, separating clubs when we're doing head-to-heads in terms of where the sort of performance benefits might come. I think it's very simple, uh, the numbers in terms of the loft on these clubs is identical by the way. And in terms of the dry ball data, unbelievable how similar they were in terms of their performance. So kind of like ball speeds, launch angles, they're all very, very similar and carry distances again, obviously very, very similar indeed. The one thing that really stood the uh, Gen 3 apart was the spin number. And again, uh, could be down to the variables in strike, I don't know, but for me, that was the only thing that I've seen that was noticeably different. A slightly better spin number, but for me, I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference when you're out here on the course, you know my opinion on spin, when applied to average golfers and that difference in RPM that you see, I don't think it's gonna have a major impact in terms of real time performance out on the golf course. So for me, very little to split them in terms of dry ball data. Right out here on the course, I've brought a six iron is what you see me tee off with in case anybody was wondering. And I've also got nine iron with me. I mean, I've played both sets of clubs for a great deal of time. So in terms of my overall opinion at the end, it'll be based on the full set rather than just these couple of clubs. But uh, right, so sort of, Interesting position here, we're just sort of uh, just shy of a hundred out uh, and we're downwind. Really interested to see what this does. Sit. Right. That was a nine iron. You've seen the spin number that we got in the dry ball data. That to me would suggest it's a fairly low spinning club and we might have issues. Trust me, I don't know whether you can see down the flag, we're playing downwind on a Lynx burnt track, really dry. And I hope you pick that up in terms of what we've got. I think we've got the other camera there, which should have seen how that ball came to rest. Now to me, once again, and we're playing a half shot, you ain't gonna get as much spin on it anyway. Downwind, I mean, come on, when are we going? I'm gonna start a petition, you know, that uh, average golfers need to stop worrying about dry ball data that says spin number is low. It baffles me. There's another one. See what this thing does. I rest my case, but I think I give up. Spin number is overrated. End of story. If you're new to my channel, then I am the average golfer and be aware I don't hit 300 yard drives and uh, I'm not the best player in the world. But I will give you my honest opinion in terms of product reviews and I do a lot of course vlogs as well. So maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Right, time for an assessment. We've been through every possible element that we can in terms of review. I'm gonna throw, as I've done in recent, uh, the new review sort of format. I'm gonna put in these head-to-heads a bit of a score up you can see now. And you see there's very little to split them in terms of both on course, dry ball data, looks and feel that is a, is a definite sway towards a Gen 3. Price point, there's a massive switch towards the 2 one ones. Uh, but like I said, they score very well in different departments, but ultimately very little to split them. Dry ball data, like I said, almost identical. Bit better spin number in terms of the Gen 3. Sound and feel, Gen 3, like I said, is without doubt better. It's kind of like it's a buttery soft feel where maybe um, 0211's just not quite as, as good. They're a cast club at the end of the day. As good as the job they've done, it's not that butter soft feeling that's in the Gen 3s. When you come down to the price, the only thing I'd ask you to remember is that if you're looking at different shaft options, there's far more options available at the cost, at the included cost, in the Gen 3 and there's a more limited range in terms of the uh, 0211 in terms of the standard cost obviously you can pay for upgrades so that's something to bear in mind ultimately the review is sort of very simple and straightforward in terms of an evaluation it's all down to what you look for specifically in terms of that feel in terms of which you like in terms of the looks I will say 211 if there is a second version of these I think that just sort of strip across the back could be improved on it it would enhance the sort of quality appeal quite significantly the Gen 3 again you can see aesthetically there's a lot of attention to detail gone on there but they're not differences that would appeal to a lot of golfers so it's down to that budget thing if you've got unlimited budget you choose the Gen 3s but 
value for money bang for your buck the 211 is very hard to beat indeed so that's it importantly that's my opinion and the important thing is, is you get out there you try them yourselves that's the only opinion that matters hopefully covid restrictions are lifting a bit things to get back to normal conway is absolutely superb right now one last mention is that uh, if you've not entered already august the 21st we'll be playing down here for the average golfer 2020 there are a few spaces left there at theaveragegolfer.co.uk so please come and enter that it's a stunning morning it's half nine in the morning jumpers come off and it's a great day enjoy yourselves if you like the video then please hit that like button and if you're not a subscriber then uh, maybe also consider hitting that as well as ever thanks for watching and i'll see you soon